This video will be building on a previous one I did on the embouchure or lips, so be sure to check that out. Here, we're going to be looking at how to get the higher sound of the shakuhachi, known as kan. Not exactly sure what I mean. This is the lower sound, otsu. And this is the higher sound, kan, on the exact same note. And this is me pushing otsu up into kan on that same note. First, let's take a close look at my lips as I play each note in otsu and then push it up into kan. Try to notice any changes that might be occurring in my lips while I do this. Now, while I will be playing some notes loudly, I'm going to make an effort to play most of my notes in kan quietly. This is because this takes more skill and effort, particularly focus from the embouchure. So my hope is that this will give you the biggest visual contrast in my lips between that lower sound otsu and the higher sound kan. This is especially true as we move up higher on the shakuhachi, the notes in kan become progressively more difficult. This is something that I'll address later on and I'll give you an exercise to help you with that. Roll. Medi and Khan. I've found it very useful to show students how much power or force I'm using with my air by suddenly opening up my lips while playing a note on the shakuhachi. So notice how fast my ear runs out when I do this. Now let's see about some quieter notes. So a bit slower. Let's see about a merry note in con. So you can see my air, it is expelled or it's being pushed out at a much slower rate, even for our merry notes in con. So this is due to me having a smaller opening to really focus and cradle that air. But it, 
that allows me to use less force so that I can get a gentler, quieter sound. So conversely, to get a loud sound such as this, I have to push quite a bit. So let's talk about what I'm pushing with. In Japanese, this is called the hara, or in English, we could simply call it the stomach, gut, or the abdomen. I'm going to give you a look at this section of my body while I'm playing shakuhachi so you can see more closely how much I'm engaging it. I'm going to have to lift my arms unusually high so that you can see my hara or abdomen as I play. Pay special attention to how much I have to engage my hara when I begin a con note like this. And also notice how little I have to engage my hara to play a merry note in con. Now I'm going to give you an exercise I came up with called climbing the ladder of Khan. Khan gets progressively more difficult the higher up the shakuhachi we climb. We're going to start at the bottom at Ro, but if your shakuhachi has all too common issues on this note, it might be best to start with Tsu. Once we get Ro and Khan, We'll take a nice deep breath. We'll play Ro again. Then we'll open the first finger hole to voice the next note up, Su. Now we're not going to stop our breath in between Ro and Su because we want to feel the transition and give our body time to absorb what that feels like. And we'll continue to climb up the shakuhachi all the way up to the top note. Now it's very normal that as you're climbing the ladder of Khan that you might slip and fall back down into Otsu. This happens to a lot of people, particularly on the note Chi. So Chi is when we've opened one, two, three finger holes. And it'll sound and look something like this. So here I've slipped into Otsu and I'm trying, you know, to get it back in Ka, but notice that it's staying in Otsu. Now this is what often happens to people is that the note that they slip from Khan down into Otsu on is very difficult for them to push it back up into Khan. So what we often have to do is go back down one note or one rung on the ladder and try Khan on that note. Hopefully we'll get it. If we get it, play it a few times. Then again, take a nice breath in and play that note and then transition to the next note up with the breath continually coming out and the sound unbroken. And hopefully you'll be able to hit that note that you faltered on solidly 
and con. Now, it's sometimes the case that even when we go back down one rung on the ladder, it's still not enough. And we might find that we have to go all the way back to the beginning, but that's just fine. That's all part of the exercise. The hara is the heart of shakuhachi playing. It's where we get all of our energy or power from. And it's the relationship between the hara and the lips or embouchure, which focus or unfocus that energy, that enables us to get literally every sound possible on the shakuhachi. So I encourage you to put your awareness or attention down at the hara to see not only what it's doing, but to see if you can intentionally engage it to help you achieve the notes that you're after, particularly kan. It's also equally beneficial to do the same thing inside of the mouth. This is where the pressure sensation not only tells you how much power you're generating with the hara, but it tells you if you're focusing it. For example, if you're going for kan and you generate lots of power with your hara, but your lips are quite open. It's like a garden hose with no nozzle. The energy, the water, or the air is just going to spill out. You might get con, but it'll often be a sort of scratchy, rough sound like this. And it may only last for five seconds or so because the air is spilling out at such a fast rate. So by focusing the embouchure, we convert that energy, that power from the hara into this smooth, focused, and powerful airstream that is very likely to bump the shakuhachi up into Khan.